Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is January 14th, Thursday. Uh, we have got a term quiz coming up next week. So that's what we're gonna, that's gonna be the first thing on our agenda here today is we're gonna do a little Quizlet Live. Uh, be advised, there are over 60 terms. Wow, we there are over 60 terms on that Quizlet link, um, but only about 30 of them are gonna make the quiz. Uh, so uh, you need to study in a smart fashion this week. Don't study the ones that you already know. Study the ones that you don't know. You might actually have to go on and study before this term quiz uh, coming up next week. Uh, which, by the way, before I forget, that schedule for next week looks a little something like this. Uh, January 18th, we are celebrating uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Um, so no school for all. On the 19th, we're coming back with odd classes. And then on the 20th, we're coming back with even classes. So uh, you'll only have one of each next week, one odd, one even coming up next week. And then obviously conferences on Thursday. So uh, parents will be getting a little link sent out shortly. Uh, it's like a little Calendly link in which they can sign up for a parent-teacher conference time with teachers. So look out for that if you are a parent watching on. So uh, then I'm gonna do a little upfront reading on why World War I still matters. Why is this still relevant to study today? I mean, obviously you, know, you already know the scope of how many people have died, you know, nine, nine million soldiers, up to 20 million uh, casualties. Um, why is it that uh, why is it that this is still worth studying today? And hopefully you can gather that by the time we are done meeting today. Uh, then I you I'm gonna cut you loose on a little World War One crash course play posit. Uh, that link is available on Schoology, and then I will stick around here to answer any questions that you might have about what is going on uh, with this whole process going on at the Capitol. You know, it used to feel like. Uh, I used to feel like the elder statesman because I had lived through a uh, an impeachment process already. Uh, but golly, you have, I guess I've just got one on all of you who have lived through two, uh, or unless you're like Mr. Winters and you've lived through like five. So um, let's get right to it here, folks. I want everybody to go to quizlet.live. Let's go to quizlet.live. And I'll have that code up for you momentarily. There is a slight chance that this is going to be fussy and not work today because that was the case with my first hour today. But we'll see. Hopefully they got the kinks all, all figured out. Hot dog, look at that. It looks Where's like it music? might just work today, Mr. Winters. Where's the music? That's your job. No, remember what happens when it's my job. Yeah, just don't play, don't. Don't play anything that the Don't computer... play any band that's in open rebellion since the Napster era about people downloading their music. Get with it, dude. All right, so we got 18 in, and we need close to, and we need 23, it looks like, 23. Missing just a couple of you, but I'll give you about 30 more seconds to get in here, and then we'll get to a little Quizlet Live. All right, here we go. <laughs> this is this gonna work come on create the game there we go all right here we go come 
Come on. Oh, shoot. I think we hit a hiccup. Uh oh, I got the music. Come on, close it live. Come on. I've clicked this about 10 times. I don't know if it's going to work, guys. Shoot. Shucks. I'll say. Okay, well, since Quizlet Live isn't going to work, Mr. Winters is just going to read aloud for you every term, and everybody's going to listen and pay attention, okay? Damn. No? You guys don't like that idea? Okay. Well, uh, kind of stinks, but uh, I hate to put it on you guys, but it looks like you're going to have to study the terms on your own at some point here, okay? Uh, we got the term quiz coming up next week. Kind of stink that you have to study on your own. We can't uh, do it together, but that's just the case. Uh, Mr. Winters, remind me, and maybe we'll review uh, before we take the quiz next week, okay? Okay. Are you recording yet? Yeah. I had balloons all set to go as the name of the song by the postmarks. Let me down. Have I mentioned that you're like a really, really strange dude? Yep. We've talked Every about day. that. Okay. Got it. All right. Um, here we go, kids. Uh, let's get right into why World War One still matters. Okay. Why World War One still matters. Uh, you can either access this. Let's see. Right down here. And you can click on the upfront why World War One still matters. So that's underneath activities under World War One. Uh, while I've got you here. Um, you got your lost battalion drop box. Okay. That's open until, uh, until about midnight tonight. And I will be putting that into the grade book sometime tomorrow. So lost battalions going to the grade book. Make sure you get on that. Uh, your world war one term quiz coming up next week. And then obviously, uh, the world war one crash course play posit, which you can see available right here. So you guys know where that is located. Everybody knows how to access it. And after we're done with this reading, I'm going to be cutting you loose so that you can get going on that play posit. Okay. Anything I missed there, Mr. Winters? No. All right, dog. Here we go. Why World War I still matters. Millions of people were killed. Mighty empires fell. And the globe was remade during World War I. A hundred years later, we're still dealing with the consequences. In one moment, the world stopped and began again. On November 11th, 1918, at exactly 11 a.m. Paris time, par uh, bells rang and celebrations broke out all over the globe. After four years and millions of deaths, World War I was over. On that date, we referred to it as Armistice Day, okay? otherwise known as the treaty was signed and the war was over. What do we call Armistice Day today? Anybody got an idea? What do we call November 11th? Veterans Day. Nice job. I always get uh, Veterans Day and Memorial Day mixed up, and we can talk in depth about the difference between those sometimes later, but always remember that Memorial Day starts with an M, and that's in May. Okay, good job. The timing has been laid out in an armistice, in agreement to stop fighting, written by the war's victors, the Allied powers. Led by France, the United Kingdom, and the United States, the Allies had forced their defeated enemy, Germany, to sign the agreement. The conflict it ended was so massive, people referred to it simply as the Great War. Up to that point in history, the uh, it was the bloodiest war ever. About 20 million people, both soldiers and civilians, were killed. France alone had lost 1.4 million soldiers in battle, 17% of the country's uh, fighting age men sometimes referred to as the lost generation. It affected countries for generations, says Doran Cart, senior curator at the National World War I Museum and Memorial in Kansas City, Missouri. It changed the whole outlay of the globe. This November 11th bells will ring again, uh, excuse me, around the world to celebrate the 100th anniversary at the end of World War I. The war continues to influence the world. Here are some essential things to know about it. 
Number one, the war introduced many, excuse me, dead, many, <laughs> while we, the war introduced deadly new weapons. The war began in July 1914 as a struggle for power between two groups of European nations, the, Euro the allied powers, first led by Russia, France, and the UK, and the central powers headed by Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire, centered in what is now Turkey. See the map above. Uh, folks, if you ever wondered, okay, uh, Ask yourself the question, why are there so many conflicts going on uh, in the Middle East? Well, at, at before World War I, everything that you know of as the Middle East was referred to as the Ottoman Empire. It was a vast, diverse, expansive empire that at the end of World War I, the Allied powers, powers decided that they would divvy up. They would, they would chop it up into little countries okay? because they thought the Ottoman Empire was too powerful. But when they chopped it up, they never took into consideration a whole lot of stuff. And that if you ever wondered why there's so much conflict there, it's because they're still dealing with how it was divided up after World War I. Few people could have predicted so many soldiers would be killed. The main reason was uh, the historic of the historic loss of life, say experts, was the introduction of new deadly, wep uh, deadly new weapons. Among these were machine guns and artillery that could fire more rapidly than before. Tanks, airplanes, and poison, uh, excuse me, and poison gas were also deployed for the first time in World War I. For protection, troops on both sides dug long ditches in the ground called trenches, using them to take cover. Soldiers sometimes stayed in them for weeks or months. Um, this is a, this is like the classic example of the technology of the time, just kind of really bypassing the tactics. Okay, so millions of people are going to be dying in an area in which the front never really moved more than a mile or two. It's really kind of sad. By the end of 1914, the opposing armies had created an almost uh, unblo unbroken battle line of parallel trenches that stretched from the coast of Belgium to Switzerland. This 450-mile-long uh, line of trenches was called the Western Front. In letters home, soldiers described the, bruta uh, the brutal uh, reality of life in the trenches. Mud up to their knees, rats as large as cats, and the horrible smell of overflowing toilets. Yeesh. When ordered to attack, soldiers rushed out of their trenches on, uh, onto open ground. As they charged the opposing trenches, waves of men would be mowed down by enemy fire. Despite the high death count, battles often resulted in little or no gain of territory. Afterward, bodies sometimes remained, there, remained where they had fallen. There was no safe way to retrieve them. French soldier Louis Barthas recalled stumbling upon the uh, gruesome scene while searching an abandoned enemy trench. I saw, I saw a pile of corpses, almost all of them German, they had, uh, that they had started to bury right in the trench. There was no one here but the dead, I exclaimed. Yeesh. All right, up to number two. The U.S. didn't want to get involved. When the war began, President Woodrow Wilson pledged the United States to neutrality but from the start, many Americans felt the U.S. should fight alongside the U.K. and France because of our strong historical ties to those nations. Then on May 7, 1915, a German submarine sank a British uh, pass passenger ship called the Lusitania off the southern coast of Ireland. Among the 1,200 crew members and uh, passengers who died, 128 were Americans. What the Lusitania did was bring the war home to Americans, historian John Cooper has said. Suddenly, the foreign conflict felt like our own. Still, it took nearly two more years as the steady worsening of the U.S.-German relationship for America to enter the fight. And on April 2nd, 1917, Woodrow Wilson, uh, excuse me, President Wilson asked Congress for a declaration of war. The Germans were waging a warfare against mankind, Wilson said. The world must be made safe for democracy. Number three, the U.S. troops helped save the day. In June 1917, American soldiers began arriving in Europe. The people of Britain and France, devastated by years of fighting, cheered the young Americans who marched through the streets on their, on their way to the battlefront. Those fresh U.S. troops helped turn the uh, war around for the Allies. In July 1918, U.S. forces joined the British and French troops to push back the Germans at the Second Battle of the Marne in France. The battle proved to be the last major stand for an exhausted Germany. By early November, Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, which were fighting the Allies in the war's eastern front, had surrendered. Then Germany, the last of the Central Powers, reluctantly agreed to the peace settlement 
to a peace settlement. There would have been no World War II without World War I. Okay, number four. World War I remade the globe. The war triggered the collapse of four powerful empires. Russia, which you probably know, it pulled out of the war because of something called the Bolshevik Revolution. This is exactly the point in time in which Russia pulls out of the war and becomes the Soviet Union. Austria-Hungary, Germany, and the Ottoman Empire. Those dynasties had been there for centuries, says Michael Nieberg of the U.S. Army War College in Pennsylvania. Now in four years, they were gone. When it was all over, Germany was forced to accept blame for the war, give a, about 10% of its territory, and severely reduce its military. The country was also forced to pay the Allied nations about $33 billion in damages. Wowee. Those terms enraged Germans. By, excuse me, in 1933, that anger helped fuel Adolf Hitler's rise to power. In part, see, in part seeking revenge for Germany's humiliation in World War I, Hitler would have eventually attempt to conquer Europe, plunging the globe into World War II, says Cart, the, uh, of the National World War I Museum and Memorial. There would have been no World War II without World War I. Lastly, number five, the U.S. became a global power. One nation emerged from the, uh, from the war stronger, the U.S. With its industrial might and more than two million troops, America proved itself a powerful force and was transformed into a, into a world leader. That was the moment when the U.S. began to, uh, to get involved in foreign affairs almost everywhere, says Nyberg. Today, however, many Americans question whether the cost of being involved in conflicts around the world is too steep. The Middle East is a prime example of this. Uh, since 2001, 7,000 Americans have died battling terrorists in Afghanistan and Iraq. And guys, this is obviously, this article is two years old. The U.S. has also been involved in fighting in the Syrian civil war that, is, uh, that began in 2011. Conflicts in all three countries show no signs of any, ending anytime soon. And like I said, this is two years old. The past, uh, like past presidents, pre, uh, President Trump and his advisors have questioned what to do. What can, the, uh, what can the U.S. hope to accomplish in foreign wars? Can the world ever truly be made safe for democracy, as Woodrow Wilson vowed? This, de uh, this is a debate that comes directly from World War I, says Nyberg. It's one, he adds, that we may never finish struggling with. Uh, over on the right-hand side here, you can kind of see a timeline of how, the, uh, world, how World War I played out, when the U.S. gets involved, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but folks, that is essentially what we got here uh, for today. I'm sorry, I wasn't sharing my screen, Mr. Winters. Some help you are, you know, what the rip. Hopefully everybody followed along, doubtful. Uh, but anyway, uh, here's what we got uh, for the rest of the day here, folks. You can go on and find that World War I uh, play posit, uh, the Crash Course one. Like I said, it's under that Crash Course uh, folder under the World War I under activities. And I want you guys to get going on that, okay? Um, like I said, I will stick around here if you have any questions about any of your schoolwork or anything that you need help with specifically. Um, Anything else for the good of the order?